for Cho starts with Rento, looks through the guild's job postings, and comes across one that offers a reward of one bronze piece. The economy is bad right now though, so taking that job is pretty much like working for free. Still, some adventurers are likely to do it, even if the pay isn't great. Some adventurers may take the job just to do it, while others do it because they want to. He keeps looking at the request board because he wants to help people and meet up every once in a while. Sheila sees him and comes up to him to ask him something, if he's found a quest. Ren says that he doesn't plan to go into the labyrinth anytime soon, just like she told him not to, which she finds interesting. She just walked over to see what she could do to help him. Getting a quest. Since she offered Ren, he asks her if anyone has taken the quest that comes with a single bronze piece as a reward. She looks at the board and sees that the quest that Red is talking about has still not been claimed, but it will be hard. He has to find a dragon bloom flower, but this flower is only meant to bloom Misher a poisonous swamp. The story behind the flower is beautiful, though. It says that a driven fell in love with a person, and his blood turned into the bright red flower to show how much he loved her. Ren has heard of the story before. It sounds nice, but the person who asked for it says they need it. Ren decides to go on the quest, because someone from the orphanage wants to use the flower to heal someone and save someone they care deeply about. He does go to the orphanage later to get more information from the person who made the request, but the building is in much worse shape than he thought it would be at first. Rent doesn't want to make things hard for the people who live here. That's why he pulls out a tube of slime. Uh, it worked fine to fix the handle with what he had on him. He then knocks on the door to see if anyone is there, and a young girl answers it. She doesn't give him a good look at first, so she thinks Ren is someone else. But when she finally opens her eyes, Ren is able to tell her that he is the one who took the quest she posted. And she says she's sorry for her mistake, since she thought he was a debt collector. Since he was the one who took her on the quest, he is welcome to come inside. When he gets to Rent, he finds a room full of kids. When the girl tells the other kids that Rent is an adventure, they all start asking him questions. The girl tells them to stop because she told them that before. People who are ears are dangerous. But she then turns to Rent and says, sorry because he is also an adventure. His response to what she said wasn't too hurtful because it's pretty much true for most adventurers. He even tells the kids not to approach strange adults so carelessly in the future. He can tell that they are good kids, and the girl says that's because their headmistress, Lillian, has raised them well. When Ren told her he was a bronze adventure, she was shocked because she thought the best she could get for a quest like hers was an iron adventure. She tells Ren her name is and starts talking about the quest she posted as a dragon, even though she already knew this. Bloom flowers are hard to find because they are rarely sold in stores and when they are, they cost a lot of money, way too much for her $0 salary to cover. Ren is willing to help her get one as long as she can tell them the whole story. She agrees to tell them, but they have to keep it a secret for her own safety. Once Ren agrees, she takes him to see Lillian, the headmistress, who is sick in bed at the moment. She greets Ren and thanks him for being willing to help. She does, however, seem to believe that he is here to help clean up. He promised not to tell her about the real request, so the orphanage basement and Rent doesn't correct her. Elise tells Lylan to rest while she talks to Ren because she is having trouble talking. Instead, she tells Art in a different room that Lillian is a priestess and can use divinity. But if a user's divinity isn't strong enough, bad things happen. The more she uses divinity, the more evil energy will build up in her body. It won't kill her right away, but it will get worse over time. Why did Ren not know about this condition before? It's strange, especially since he can also use divinity. What Elise then says is that this disease can only be cured with the blood of a holy maiden or a certain kind of medicine, which needs the dragon balloon flower. They haven't told Lillian about the disease yet because they think she'll just give the orphanage to another priestess and die. Rank only needs to help her get the flower before that takes place. Ren agreed to get the flower for all I see, which makes her very happy. The reason being that she knows the quest is pretty unreasonable, but Rent doesn't mind. Because he is already here, he promises that you will get that flower for her. But before he does that, he decides to clean out the basement. Why the kids can't do it? It's because, for some reason, monsters appear down there. 
He is careful as he goes down because he doesn't know what might jump out at him. She's also following him because she thinks it will be fun to see Rent hunt a monster. He doesn't understand what would be so interesting about watching him kill some monsters. He does, however, give her a dagger for her own safety so she can protect herself if she needs to. As they go deeper into the basement, they finally find. These are the monsters Leland was talking about. These are big rats or your average New York sewer rat, so Rent doesn't use his sword. Instead, he works out to get stronger so he can beat them. The rat tries to bite Rent, but Rent can block it with his fist. But when the rat comes back in for another bite, Rent is caught off guard and gets bit. He is still able to get rid of the rat, though. Still, it's not a big deal. It does something strange after eating Rent's blood. It changes color all of a sudden, and now OB Bay rents every command. This is a big change for some reason. So Rhett goes back to Lorraine's house right away to show her what happened when she sees him. He tells her what's going on with the rat on his shoulder, and after a while, she gets the main idea of what happened. She knew that Rent could make familiars and control them, but she didn't think that Rent could do the same thing. She never really thought about what would happen if the creature drank his blood. Reen asks if he can keep the rat, and Lorraine says he can because she already has a zombie living in her house. But things are tough right now, so the rat has to pay rent. If it doesn't have cash, it can use its body as payment for research purposes. She asks Rent what he wants to name it, but he isn't very creative, so she comes up with her own name. Instead, she chooses the name Adel, which means noble one, since the rat was in charge of all the other rats in the basement. Edel seems to really like his new name. Ren doesn't really understand what Adel is saying, but he does speak the rat's language. Reen is mostly looking over his gear that night because he doesn't have anything else to do. Since he turned into an undead monster, he doesn't need to sleep anymore. If he had planned to stay in the dungeon forever and grind until he reached Mythal, I people would think it's strange for an adventurer to never need to rest. After a short time, Karen walks into the room and offers Rent something he didn't think she would. A home-cooked meal. He doesn't know what to say, because this doesn't happen very often. But Luring takes offense, which surprises him since she's pretty sure of her cooking skills. She changes the subject and says that Ren is going to the swamp to find that flower for Ali. But you should know how dangerous that swamp really is. Ren planned to go by himself so that he wouldn't have to worry about poison, although it would be safe if it were just him, Laren says that there are other threats there, like the wyvern-like creatures that live there. Even bronze adventurers would have to form a group to take on such a dangerous area. Ren doesn't really want to fight them, though. First, he's going to use holy water to keep them away until he finds what he needs. Later, someone sees Ren riding in a carriage that is taking him to the swamp. After a short distance, the driver tells Ren that he can't go any further because it's too dangerous but he'll be back in the evening to pick Ren up after his work here is done. It's really hard to get through this swamp. There are, however, a lot of rare plants here, so it's still kind of walkable, but that's about it. The monsters that appear in the wild are one of the most dangerous things about this place. Most monsters in dungeons are only a few hours old. They are fought by adventurer. The ones in this group have lived long enough to know how to use weapons well and fight together. So with his current skills, he is strong enough to beat all of the goblins who have planned an ambush for rent. In one swift motion, he keeps walking through the swamp. He thinks to himself, it's fortunate that I'm not dead, because that means the poison that would have killed him by now can't hurt him. Rent wouldn't mind staying undead forever because it would be really helpful if he were still human. What he needs to do is fix the way he looks. But while he was thinking about all of this, he fell through one of the bridge's weaker planks. Now that he's off the bridge, he's attacked by a swamp monster, which was just bad luck for him, and finally, he beats the monster. He then walks back to the shore, where his parent was watching him. Back in town the whole time Sheil is talking to Lauren, and tells her how much she enjoyed the food she made earlier. Of course, that was probably because she added blood to it. Sheila feels bad about the food she just ate, but Lauren tells her that she meant to only eat the portion of food she made for rent. They get back on track and talk about how the guild already knows that the village rent went out of his way to help. They all look like they are very grateful to him. The guild asks them for the name of the adventurer who helped, 
but they wouldn't give it because Rent told them to keep it a secret. This way, Bael doesn't know that it was him. What he does, though, Sheil knows about. She doesn't get why he wouldn't want to take credit for doing such a good thing, though. She tells him that he's probably just being careful because of the rumors that were already going around about him. People would find a way to make him the bad guy if he was linked to the kidnapping ring. At the same time, Ren is running away from the monster that is after him. He may have made a mistake when he bought holy water from a back alley to keep the wyverns away. A crackhead. He can't go any further and has to fight the monster now. If he wants to stay alive, he jumps into the air and attacks the wyvern with a sword strike that is infused with Mona. However, that wasn't enough to critically damage it. Therefore, Ren tries to defeat the monster with both mana and spirit, but as he strikes it, he can't do any damage and is running out of auctions. Just as Ren was about to give up, Enel runs up to it, covers himself in divinity, and jumps into its mouth. The monster seems to have been hurt by this, as it spits Enel back out. When Ren finds out that Edel can use his skills as his familiar, he is surprised, but this gives Ren the idea he needs to kill the monster. That means he can keep going into the swamp, until he finds a whole field of the flower if he covers his sword in divinity and strikes again, this time being able to completely cut off the head. He wants to find, since there are so many he thinks it should be okay, to choose more than one. But as he does this, a strange man comes up to him. This was the end of the episode. Thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss the next part, please subscribe.